Today we're going to discuss uh, the structure of profit statements according to uh, two systems of costing, one absorption and the other marginal. Let's start with a scenario. Here we have a manufacturing company that produces a unit that sells for $120. The costs of production for this item uh, are, are presented thus. Direct materials and direct labor and variable production overheads add up to $72. There's also a variable selling cost of $2 per unit. Now the budgeted level of production is 1,100 uh, units for the next two years, years one and years two. Um, however, the actual output and sales levels vary from that in the ways in the uh, form indicated here and at the end of the given periods we also have actual and uh, fixed production overheads and selling general administrative costs shown here now notice how this the uh, cost data is presented we have all the variable costs that are grouped let's say upstairs both production and non-production. And down below we have the actual costs which are both production related and non-production related. Now the reason why this information is organized in this way is that we can uh, use it in order to build a profit and loss statement under the marginal costing system. The marginal costing is focused on the variable costs in connection with producing a and selling um, a unit. Let's see where this goes. Now just take, taking the uh, numbers as indicated in the scenario here, if we have actual sales in year one of 950 units, 950 times the selling price of $120 gives us a sales revenue of $114,000. That's the easy part. When we get to the costs now, we have to be careful. What we want to do is focus only on the variable costs of uh, production uh, when we use the marginal costing system. The variable cost of sales for these 950 units will be determined as follows. We start with opening inventory, which in this case is zero. And the production costs we incur Notice that the actual production is more than the sales figure. We produce 1,000 units. 1,000 units of production costs times $72 gives us $72,000. Notice this is the 72 that we extracted from the cost card, which corresponds to the total variable costs. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten the $2. That will come in to the picture a little bit later. Now, having produced 1,000 units, we need to deduct from the 72,000 the value of the closing inventory. It's always good to use common sense in these questions. If we produce uh, 1,000 units and we sell 950 units, what happens to the difference, the 50 units? Well, they go into inventory. So the 50 units that are put it to inventory at a value again at $72 equal 3,600 and this deducted from 72,000 to $68,400. Now what happens to the other variable costs that were in our scenario? The 950 units were sold and the selling costs, variable selling costs of $2 gives us another um, a total of $1,900. Now notice that the selling price of $114,000, selling price of $120 times the amount sold, this number here, minus all the variable costs in connection with this product, both the production costs and the non-production costs, i.e. the selling costs, deducted from the revenue gives us so-called contribution, very important 
definition. Keep that in mind. The contribution is an important number because it uh, represents the number which is available or the amount of money which is available to cover fixed costs. You notice here that the fixed costs are come out at the bottom uh, of, a, of a marginal costing profit and loss. We take the full amount of the actual fixed production overheads that were incurred, 16500 plus the selling general administrative costs, which are also fixed in nature, giving us a profit of $20,200. Just to take the story forward in the second year, have a look. Uh, if, if, if you pause for a moment and have a look through year two and follow the same logic, only this time notice what happens. In year two, we are actually producing 1,100 units, but we are selling more than that, 1,150 units. Where does the difference come from? The 50 units comes out of, you guessed right, the inventory. So let's build the profit and loss statement now for year two. If we sell 1,150 units at a selling price of $120, that gives us $138,000. Now the opening inventory is the same as the closing inventory from the year before, so we carry forward the $3,600. And now we have to calculate the variable costs of production for the 1,100 units that we produce in year 2. 1,100 units in year 2 at $72 a unit is equal to 79,200. Don't forget, to close the loop, we have to deduct from this the closing inventory. Well, in this case, what happens is we don't have any closing inventory because the inventory we created at the end of year one, the 50 units, have now disappeared. They've gone uh, out in the form of sales and there is no inventory left. And therefore, our variable production costs will be equal to $82,800. That's the sum of $3,600 and $79,200. Okay, then let's move forward here now. The variable selling costs in connection with selling 1,150 units is $2,300. And our sales revenue minus our variable costs, both production and non-production, is equal to a contribution of $52,900. Again, in year two, we can see that the fixed costs, the actual fixed costs were, again, $16,500 and $7,000. They didn't change, so we deduct them here at the bottom, and we end up with a profit figure according to marginal costing method of $29,400. Now the absorption costing method is a little bit trickier because it uh, proceeds on the basis that a cost card showing the production costs for um, a, a product should include not only the variable costs as we saw in the marginal costing system. That was the direct materials, the direct labor, and the variable produ production overheads, but also some element on a per unit basis of the fixed production overheads. So here we see the absorption costing uh, approach to, to uh, calculating cost of production mix both variable and fixed um, costs. So we can see here that the, uh, the newcomer on the cost card is this $15 per unit, representing each unit's share of the fixed production overheads. Now, before we go through a profit and loss uh, statement according to the absorption costing method, let's just go back upstairs for a moment and see how that $15 would have been derived. The company looks at their operations and they say that based on a normal production level of 1,100 units, um, a, a fixed production overheads of 16,500 
are generated. So that's deemed to, to be the basis of a rule. What we're saying basically is the $16,500 of fixed overheads divided by 1,100 units comes out to $15 per unit um, of fixed production overheads. This is an overhead, we could refer to this as an overhead absorption rate. Very important concept, keep that in mind uh, as we go through the profit and loss uh, calculation based on the absorption costing method.